I'm Dr. Dapali Dewan. I'm the Dan Mishra Curator of South Asian Art and Culture at the Royal Ontario Museum. Before we begin, I'd like to acknowledge that the Royal Ontario Museum sits on what has been the ancestral lands of the Wendat, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Anishinaabeg Nation, including the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation, since time immemorial to today. I personally want to acknowledge the communities who have historically lived on and cared for this land that I work on and who still do so today. I also want to acknowledge the legacies of colonialism, violence and extraction that have and continue to challenge this relationship to the land. I invite us to reflect on this, these past and present histories, my own journey of learning in a spirit of respect, sincerity and appreciation is ongoing and evolving. I'm delighted you can join us today for, ROM's, for today's ROM Connects program, which we are presenting to acknowledge the 50th anniversary of Bangladesh, a young but vital, vital country to the cultural, economic, and political life of the South Asian region and of the world. Personally, I have been struck by the vibrant art scene and just the general level of creativity that has come out of Bangladesh recently and since long. I'm pleased to say that in the Ram's own collection, there's a wonderful painting by the artist Zenul Abuddin, considered the pioneer of modernism in Bangladesh. You can find this artwork on Ram's online collection, just search Bangladesh and it will appear uh, with a handful of other works. It is said that Zenul Abuddin's abstract canvases of bold color express the human experience of some of the more turbulent times in Bangladeshi's early history. But for this program, we are focusing on understanding the texture of the Bangladeshi diaspora community in two different parts of the world, London and Toronto. This program has been produced in partnership with the Rams Friends of South Asia, and it is part of the Dan Mishra South Asia Initiative that since 2015 has allowed the Rom to enhance its activities, exploring the rich legacy of the Indus Valley world and an understanding of the origins of human knowledge. But now I would like to welcome the Friends of South Asia's Nitin Dekha to moderate today's conversation. Uh, Nitin holds a PhD in anthropology from Rice University, Houston, um, and is a cultural anthropologist, educator, and learning facilitator. For the last 15 years, Nitin has de uh, designed and um, taught courses in universities and has expertise in delivering learning for adult professionals on topics ranging from gender inclusive leadership, intercultural communication, and preparing people for the future of work. On the creative front, Nitin has published two works of fiction and has written about urban revitalization, creative industries, heritage, and art. He is a board member of the Saga Foundation and volunteers with the Friends of South Asia at the ROM, which supports the appreciation and cultivates awareness of the ROM South Asia Gallery and Collection. So I'll hand it over to Nitin. Thank you very much, Deepali, uh, for that kind introduction. Hello, everyone. It's a real pleasure to welcome you to this transnational dialogue on the making of place, home, and community in the Bangladeshi diasporas or Bangla towns of Toronto and London. I'm raised and live in Toronto, but London holds a special place in my heart. It's where I was born and where as a graduate student, I conducted field work in the late 1990s. One of those sites was Spitalfields in East London, just east of the financial district in an area at that time undergoing a great deal of transformation in terms of its architectural and cultural heritage, as well as inner city revitalization. Part of what I studied was the role of Bangladeshi Londoners in its remaking. As such, when the Friends of South Asia was looking for a way to offer a program to commemorate Bangladesh's 50th anniversary, I immediately knew what I wanted to put forward, an event that connected home and place of what scholar Shutama Ghosh, who has studied Bangladeshi migration to Toronto, calls the making of para or neighborhood in a Bidesh or foreign land. This imaginary joins London's East End 
with Toronto's Bangla Town, which is centered on Danforth Avenue between Main Street and Victoria Park, as the film we just saw so evocatively captured. I also want to extend a warm welcome to you all to the Friends of South Asia, which I am so proud to be a volunteer member for the last two years. The Friends of South Asia is part of the Royal Ontario Museum's Department of Museum Volunteers. We support the collection of South Asian artworks and artifacts at the ROM, work closely with curator Dipali Diwan, and of course, importantly, organize events that engage and reach South Asian communities, um, as well as other communities in activities such as this. I'm really now happy to introduce our three guests who no doubt will offer further insights into home, place, and community in their respective Bangla towns. We have Shumita Das, who is the co-founder and managing partner of Aspiration and a creative professional based in Toronto. She has an MBA from the University of Portsmouth, UK, and has worked with renowned corporate organizations for more than four years. Her own creative work spans government and non-government documentaries, corporate branding, professional singing, and various stage performances. Joining her is Anupan Das, an MFA, the co-founder and creative director of Aspiration. He has more than 15 years of professional experience in painting, photography, graphic design, and audiovisual media in Bangladesh and in Toronto, where he is now based. In Bangladesh, Anupam worked with renowned filmmaker Tarek Masood, photographers Shahidul Alam and Chanchal Mahmood, and served as head of audiovisual for Drek, a Bangladeshi multimedia agency. And we also have Nurjahan Julie Begum, who has worked with children and youth in the community for decades in London. In 2000, she set up the Shwadinata Trust and began to work in heritage, showcasing Bengali language, culture, and social history in East London, including writing a bilingual play entitled The Altab Ali Story and staging an exhibition called The World in the East End at the VNA Museum of Childhood. In 2017, Julie received the award for outstanding service to the community from the London Borough of Tower Hamlets. Please join me in welcoming Shumita Anupam and Julie. And I wanted to start with Shumita and Anupam. Uh, if they could, if you could both offer your comments about how you made this captivating film and insights into your own experiences in Toronto. Thank you, Nitin Bhai. Uh, hi everyone, good afternoon. Uh, this is Anupam and here is my wife Shumita. Hello everyone. And we are from Toronto. We are feeling honored to be a part of this event. First of all, we want to thank Friends of South Asia and Royal Ontario Museum to give us uh, the opportunity to make a documentary on our uh, Bengali community in Denford. And want to give our special thanks to uh, Nitin Deka and Adil Ali Khan from Saga Foundation, and Piali Roy from Friends of South Asia and Dipali Dhawan, and Erin Kerr from ROM for trusting us and giving all of our support, all of your supports. Tell about myself, I've been working with photography design and audiovisual medium for the last 13 years after my post-graduation. So it became my main profession back in my country, Bangladesh. And here, in Toronto, I'm also continuing my creative endeavor with my wife, Shumita. She's actually from a, a diversified background, has completed her MBA, worked in some prestigious universities in Bangladesh as a faculty, and also worked with various creative projects uh, with me. We have a creative farm named Aspiration, which was started back in 2013. And here in Toronto, we are working together under the banner of this organization. Actually, we are very new in Canada and have passed just two and a half years in Toronto. But even almost two years have gone with pandemic situation. So we had a very short time to explore this city, different uh, com location and different community, including our Bengali one. 
Yes, Toronto is a, a multicultural city. So from the beginning of our Toronto life, we had a dream to do creative works with different communities. These diverse communities uh, um, this, uh, attract us because of their own culture, their lifestyle, food, the way they're talking. And thus we got more and more interested to explore them, to know them. However, we started uh, to look forward to begin new works uh, with them. The process was not that simple uh, due to COVID-19. Uh, generally, mm, uh, right. Yeah. So generally, uh, to start any creative work, especially if it's a film or documentary, you need to know the community and people from their core and have to mix with them to build a relationship. So only then you can get the real essence of that particular community and their culture. So uh, as we are Bengali, we thought uh, let's start with our own community. And finally, we got our first opportunity. And that's luckily with Rome. And of course, we are glad that it is being honored in such a significant program of 50 year celebration of Bengali independence. If uh, anyone tells us to explain the film, we would say we have uh, tried to come up with ultimate Bengali essence, which is mostly surrounded by the Denford area. In the beginning of this film, you have seen a woman getting off from a streetcar wearing nice Bengali shari, uh, who is basically representing the Bengali culture as a whole. And we have stepped into the story through her. It was basically a docu-fiction and the characters are presenting how they have relations with this Bengali area through their own professional and personal life. And the behind story of building up this Bengali area in Janfur. So it was not built in a day and there are contributions of people from different backgrounds for a long time. So due to um, time limitations of our film, it has not, or it was not possible to cover all the professions, though there are lots of profession are contributing, but however, we had to make a very short list and we gave there the priority to those who are participating in the field of art and culture and contributing in the development of the Bengali community. Besides the Bengali shops, restaurants, mouthwatering food, and especially our Shahid Minar, which is a very close to the Dan food, in a Dantonia Park, all gives a very complete flavor of Bengal. So I uh, hope uh, that uh, people have liked it and we will request you all to watch the longer version too. Uh, the link is already given here and it's a Vimeo link. So you just need to click and watch. Hope uh, you will also enjoy it because here you get the elaboration of all the um, filmic uh, attitudes and all the perspectives, right? So hope you'll enjoy it. Please watch it. And we wish to work more with our Bengali community as well as not only the Bengali community, other communities also. So thank you everyone for listening to us. And uh, if you have any question about the film, we will be very delighted to answer all this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Anupama Shumita. And uh, just to follow up, if you do have any questions, please drop them into the Q&A. And towards the end, we can take all the questions uh, for our guests. 
And so now I'd like to invite uh, Julie Begum to offer some um, perspectives on the, the great range of work she's been doing in East London and the sort of the Bangla Town experience there. Julie? Hi, hello. Um, welcome everybody. Uh, it's really nice to be here. Thank you so much for inviting me to be a part of this amazing program. Um, I really enjoyed watching your film. So that was great to see what life is like for uh, Bengali Canadians in Toronto and, and to be a part of this transatlantic um, uh, event. Um, as you've mentioned before, uh, the, this is a particularly significant year for uh, Bangladeshis or Bengalis and living at home and abroad. And it's been a year full of uh, events um, from the very beginning. Um, we've been celebrating and commemorating the 50th anniversary here in, in Britain. Um, I'd like to start off with um, by talking about um, the Bengalis in Britain here in London in particular um, and I want to sort of put it into context a little bit because um, it will give you an idea of the relationships that we have here. So approximately there are hundreds of thousands of Bengalis living in Britain. Um, most of whom originated from Bangladesh and in, in the beginning would have come from the region of Silet in the northeast of the country. And other Bengalis would have come from other parts of Bangladesh and West Bengal in India. Now, Tower Hamlets, which is a borough in, in London, has had a long tradition of welcoming immigrant populations from all over the world, including the Huguenots in the 18th century and Jews in the 19th. And now a third of the population in Tower Hamlets is Bengali, the largest Bengali community in the UK. However, not many people are aware that Bengali people have lived in London for nearly 400 years. And it's at the same time that Europeans were discovering um, the Americas, for example. And so while, while people were leaving on ships from Europe to discover the Americas, Bengalis were coming here. And early Bengali residents left very few signs or buildings to mark their presence. But there are some uh, clues still remaining. For example, in 1616, um, the mayor of London attended St. Dionysus Church in the city of London for the baptism of Peter, an East Indian from the Bay of Bengal, who had arrived in 1614 and whose Christian name was chosen by James I. Now, this sort of puts in context the kind of the deep and historical relationships uh, Bengalis have had with Britain from the very beginning. And the thriving streets of modern East End or London offers a, a fascinating insight into the British Bengali community and the significant contributions to contemporary UK that we've made through culture, music, food, to politics and architecture. And um, Nitin mentioned in his earlier um, address that um, he did a study about the kind of impact that was having in terms of the transition. Um, one of the things that we do um, with the Shadinata Trust, which I am chair of, um, and we're here to promote Bengali culture and heritage to young people in particular, um, is lead a walk um, around Bangla town and the Bengal East End. Now, um, I live in the ward of Spitalfields and Bangla Town, and uh, I just live off Brick Lane, which is um, known not just in a physical sense, but it's also held in the imagination of many Bengalis, because it's like the cultural home of um, a lot of Bengalis in, in, in Britain. And we start off our walk in a place called St. Botoff's Church in Orgate. And this um, ha has an early link to Bengali settlers because um, the church is dedicated to the patron saint of travelers and has been here since the reign of William the Conqueror. Um, in the church um, archives, there is a mention of a burial of a converted Indian Christian who might have been a Bengali and was called James. And he was an Indian servant of uh, an Englishman called James Dupa Brewer. And his records are here 
um, and have been here since 1618. And so we lead the walk from St. Botoff's and we go down various streets in East London where different Bengalis would have stayed and lived. Um, and one of these places would have been Jewelry Street, where a Mr. and Mrs. Rogers set up an Ayers home, which was like a home and a job centre on the corner of India Street in the 1890s, where nannies from Bengal, Burma and China would have had lodgings and sought work and um, arrived um, here to find passage home, because often these women would have been dumped once they arrived here with their um, English families and um, they would have been left destitute by these families. Um, our story really begins really with the East India Company which links Bengal to um, Britain and um, this relationship started in the 1600s when um, Britain went to um, acquire spices and other things. And ships have been coming to Britain and London in, in particular, the Blackwall docks um, from that time. And um, the, the company's first trading factory actually opened in 1615 and the company took control of Bengal in 1757. Now its ships brought back precious cargo of goods to the East London, but also human ca cargo in the form of immigrant workers known as Lashkas. Um, Asian seamen, and also I also mentioned ayahs who were Indian nannies, nursemaids or servants who accompanied families of the colonial memsabs. Now the numbers of Lash Lashkas arriving in the port of London um, no, were many and a lot of them came from Bengal who would often return on home on the next passage. However, some did jump ship and others were just abandoned here without wages by their unscrupulous employees. Now, um, the, the kind of cargo that was uh, brought to London would have um, traveled from the docks to other parts of the city and other parts of the country. And um, there were streets um, built by the East India Company. The commercial road, in fact, was built from the docks leading to the city of London, which Nitin mentioned earlier, the financial capital really of, uh, of London and this country. And they would have um, traded in spices, perfumes, pearls, tea, cotton, muslin, ginghams, dungarees, chintz, taffeta, calico, silk, indigo, ivory, saltpeter and other things that would have been brought over. Now, opium was also grown in Bengal and sold particularly uh, in China to finance the tea trade. And um, in 1699, angry weavers protested at the cheap imports of cloth from Bengal and stormed the East India house um, because they were being undercut by migrant um, um, imports from Bengal. Now, from Cutler Street, we would um, travel down to Sandy's Row. And 13 Sandy's Row was a particular significant place because um, one of the first influential Bengali residents was um, Ayubayali Master, who lived at 13 Sandy's Row between 1945 and 59. And he ran a seaman's cafe in the commercial road in the 1920s and the Shah Jahal coffee house. Um, it was also known as Aibali's dining rooms. And um, Shah Jalahal, if you know, is, was a, um, a, a Yemeni Sufi mystic who is particularly um, important in the Silet district and um, went uh, from Yemen to Silet in the 1300s. So Aibali Mashta turned his home into a vital center to support Bengalis, um, which was really, um, uh, uh, one of the first places that provi provided welfare and support to uh, Bengalis coming to this country. Now, um, from there, um, the, we, we travel, well, virtually traveling um, uh, as we're going down towards Calcutta House or Toynbee Hall. These would have been important places for uh, uh, Bengalis in the 20th century as well. Um, Calcutta House is now um, 
a site of the London Metropolitan University, but it was the tea warehouses uh, in the time, and that's why it was called Calcutta House. Toynbee Hall, um, situated um, in, in East London as well, is, was uh, an important site, not just for Bengalis, but for Britain in general, because it was, it's been a site um, for social reform and a lot of things that were created in Britain, like the welfare state and the NHS were founded while people were working in Toynbee Hall um, just after the war. Um, so it feeds into lots of historical developments that would have happened, not just um, uh, for Bengalis, but for British people in general. So I'm wondering about here, but I'm going to go take you down to um, the Outer Valley Park, um, which was named in the um, late 80s, 90s after Outer Valley, who was um, killed in a racially motivated attack by three teenagers in 1978 on his way home from work. And this was a time when lots of uh, Bengalis were facing racial harassment and violence by um, some of the people that lived here. And his murder was a turning point for the Bengali community at the time who had had enough and decided to um, let the authorities and the government know that they weren't going to take this kind of treatment any longer. So they marched with his coffin, 7,000 people in the pouring rain um, to uh, 10 Downing Street where the prime minister resides via Hyde Park, which is one of the biggest parks in London. And um, as a result of um, these protests and demonstrations, the Bengali community started organizing and to demand um, fairer treatment and equality while living here. And also for um, ra racial um, harassment and violence to be recognized by the police and the authorities. And one of the things that it achieved was to have um, a police station um, set, set up in the area um, and for racial violence to be taken more seriously on the community. Now, so this is some of the grim aspects of migration that I'm also talking about. So it hasn't always been flowers and roses and um, perfumes and whatever that's coming from uh, Bengal, but also it's been a contested um, experience and often quite a controversial um, thing for, for, for many migrants really, for, for us to be able to find a place. It's been a contested um, experience. Um, as I said, Toynbee Hall was an important place because it was founded um, to, at, as a place for, um, to reform some of the inequalities uh, in, 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 in the area, but also had an impact across the country. Um, and it's had a long history of um, supporting the Bengali community because it was one of the first places that um, provided a meeting place, a study center, a lecture hall, and a place for social programs, religious, political, and cultural events, such as the Bengali Film Festival. And also Bengali Hindus celebrated Durga Puja here. So, um, the sites of um, the Outer Bali Park um, also has the Shahid Minar, like you do in Toronto, and it's a replica of a large memorial in Dhaka, Bangladesh, which commemorates the language martyrs who were shot dead on the 21st of uh, February 1952. And every year, uh, people commemorate um, this uh, uh, event by um, meeting at midnight um, at the Shahid Minar. It's also used for other events, demonstrations and protests. And we've often met there for different reasons. And um, one of more recently, when um, we've had to confront the English Defence League who wanted to march down Tower Hamlet's streets to show uh, their uh, uh, sort of racist, fascist, um, presence in the area and we defended our community against this kind of um, invasion by meeting in Outer Valley Park and um, uh, and uh, and defending our 
our um, community in that way. Um, I'm just going to end by just saying that um, the work that we do with the Chadinata Trust is to make sure that um, there we document and um, and share the contributions that UK Bangladeshis have made, not only to um, the local community, but to Britain as a whole. And some of the publications, um, if, if, if you don't mind showing, um, uh, I've just um, was able to share, th these are some of the publications that um, we've produced um, um, to record the kind of experiences of the different generations of uh, Bangladeshis in Britain. So the first one is the, the, the tales of uh, three generations of Bengalis in Britain, and that looks at the, the initial um, experience of people coming, the formation of community, but also then later looking at the cultural and uh, political and social um, contributions. And the, the previous, um, the other slide um, refers to um, the more detailed um, experiences of Bengalis in East, London, East End, which dates back to the 400 years that I mentioned before. And the exploring of Bangla Town and the Bengali East End is a part of one of the cultural work walks that is offered um, as a part of um, Tower Hamlet's uh, cultural um, uh, resources and we helped put that together with um with the local borough so people can come and go on a self-guided walk or they could um ask uh, one of our volunteers to to take them around on this walk to uh, help them explore bangla town and bengali east end i hope that was um uh not too messy um uh but i'm happy to take questions and um comments thank you very much Thank you very much, Julie. Uh, that was incredible, actually, the kind of comprehensive history, uh, the social history and the, the history of migration, which is quite complex, uh, both of London as the site of, you know, uh, imperialism and the metropole and this movement of various peoples, uh, not just only in the last few decades, but really the last few centuries, including all sorts of people from Bengal and how both trade and sort of human labor are interwoven um, and sort of geographically also cited in uh, Spitalfield. And it's incredible that you are right near uh, Brick Lane. There are some very uh, fascinating questions for you, uh, if I might start with you. And then um, we also have some questions for um, Anupam and Shumita as well. So one of them was uh, amazing to hear of Bengali travelers from the 17th to the 19th century, to the UK. Given this long history, what, what is the atmosphere in Britain today towards the Bengali community? Why, and then the second question, why does it seem in Western spaces that certain communities are perpetual newcomers? Okay, so um, London has always been a place where people have come from different parts of the world for thousands of years not just hundreds. Um, and it's always been a site where people have, the East End of London has always been a, a place where it's welcomed people from all over the world. Um, so just remind me of that first part of the question. Um, Pardon me, one second. Uh, that was got on my list. Uh, sorry. Given this, yes, given the long history of, uh, yes. of Bengali travelers to the UK, uh, what is the atmosphere today towards the Bengali community? So that's one part. Okay. The second part was about why does it seem that uh, certain communities are always seemed as perpetual newcomers in right. Western spaces such as the UK? Yes. So the first part of the question, there's been different layers of migration of Bengalis to Britain over the centuries. From the very early um, uh, settlers who would have come on the ships to more uh, recent um, Bengalis who would have come via other European countries, for example, um, Italy or Ireland from, uh, from other EU countries. So there are different, we're not a homogeneous, um, 
community. We're very messy and it's heterogeneous. People arrived at different times, at different stages of their um, lives, and they would have come with different kinds of baggage. Um, when we're not all people aren't all not everyone was educated or affluent or have the kind of lifestyle that um that i saw shown in the film in canada you know people work in various lay different types of um economies and different uh, have been different parts of their journey so the attitude to bengalis depends on your relationship to people that you know but also um to the history britain's own history um and the the connection that britain has with uh, empire and commonwealth so it really depends on people's knowledge and experience of that relationship and what relationship they have with people in their own lives where, whether it's personal or professional and britain will always be or london will always be a place where we will always be, you know, there'll be always newcomers. There's new uh, communities being formed as we speak in, in London. The, not in the same way as previous generations because the kind of immigration to the country has changed. So we won't have um, the kind of um, numbers or um, the kind of waves that we had in previous times, but there are still people who, who are settling in the East End. So we have um, uh, more recent would be the more cultural uh, communities who are here, the creatives who have been moving into the area. Um, also um, more affluent people living in the area because it's become more um, expensive to be here. <coughs> I hope that answers the question. Thank you very much, Julie. And so another question that we received is, um, this is an interesting one as well with a comparative question. I understand yeah. Canada is one of the only countries in the world with a multicultural, and that's sort of in quotes, immigration policy. Does this affect cultural identity differently for Bengalis in UK versus Canada? So I wonder whether um, Anupam and Shumita, you might want to you know, um, speak to this as you are uh, you know, based now in Canada and you were talking about the introduction to that multiculturalism and how how do you think is does that make it different for the bengalis that you met uh, in making your film plus your own experiences um do you want me like to compare uh because i have both experiences in uk oh. and canada oh wonderful <laughs> yes then please do so so i was in uk from 2008 to 10 so we and back to Bangladesh and came back again to Canada. So what I find uh, both country are very nice and very warm welcoming towards the people or population who are coming from the foreign countries, but in perspective of like getting the immigration. So UK is a little bit different from Canada and a bit difficult. And I, I would say not difficult, it's time consuming. But in Canada, like you can get within like three years. So we here as a peer, so we will get the citizenship within three years. But in UK, it takes like 10 years. So sometimes it depends on like other professions. So, um, so that, that's the basic difference. But in lifestyle, I would say like it's both country is better in the quality of life issue if we, if we come up with that. And in terms of culture, if we talk, yeah, I also get a, a very good cultural essence in UK also. The Bengalis are very rich there and they have a big community, especially from Silat region, there are lots of people. So in Canada also, like uh, as Canada, everyone knows it's multicultural. So coming here, that uh, the, the thing which I um, noticed more that here all the cultural people from different backgrounds, they are like we, the Bengali or the Indian, we also go, um, due to our profession, we go as we are the photographer, videography, we do. So we go to different programs with other cultures too. So uh, here in 
Canada, I, I feel the people are more practicing their own cultures and they're getting chance to practice of those cultures. Actively. Yeah, actively. And like I got so many temples, so many um, ethnicity groups, prayer. Um, so I, I have seen that, okay, so there are not too many I, I found in UK, but here there are lots of temples, even in a structure of temple. I've been surprised to see that. So there are very rich structures. So here, I think uh, due to the uh, um, uh, government support and everything, like people are getting uh, more chances to practice their own culture and having their ethnicity practicing here in Toronto. So they're becoming more Canadian in, in, in simultaneously, a Canadian and the Indian, a Canadian and a Bangladeshi. So they're not missing the home country that much. And, and like getting Canada as their own country, feeling Okay, here also we are not outsider. And in terms of cultural practice, if I say, like I have seen lots of artists, painters, dancers, singers, all of us there and everyone is uh, practicing uh, on their own way. And they're most welcome for every program and, uh, you know, every publicity. So uh, everything is like uh, very uh, commonly available. So everyone can do their own works, which uh, they have done in their own countries. So uh, there is no difference uh, in their country or in this country. So it's almost like uh, better. Yeah. They're practicing feeling home. Home. Yeah, feeling, feeling feeling like home. home. Yeah. So as I've seen this. So, so not that much missing. <laughs> and in right. terms of food, I would say, yeah, if you stay in Toronto, no, you never feel like you are outside Bangladesh. Right. I'm you getting everything. All the food. <laughs> if you come to Denford area, even whatever I didn't get in Bangladesh, sometimes I get it here. Even fresh. <laughs> and yeah. Oh, thank you so much. That's so wonderful. I was wondering, um, and this was a question that we uh, saw also in the Q&A, if you could uh, say a little bit about how you... Um, made the film and how you decided to shape that story, the narrative, and, um, and you know, how you interwove all of that, a little bit about your filming, filmmaking process, if you could elaborate. Yeah, uh, well, uh, when uh, we were thinking, uh, like as a newcomer, like as I mentioned, uh, we are very new. So we had a plan to do some work with our Bengali communities. So uh, for, from last 2020, uh, when pandemic started, we thought, okay, uh, there is no commercial works and everywhere uh, is like lockdown. So then we started our planning that, okay, we should do some works, social work after the pandemic. So we are getting ready and we are thinking like how we can start this. So we had a plan in our mind and we are waiting for the, uh, when the lockdown is over. So when everything is like quite normal, then we started our, our work, like uh, contacting with the personalities, uh, personals, then the pupils we know very well. They helped us very, uh, they help us in all, all ways, yeah, what I can say, every way, yeah. So uh, we shared our plan with uh, a bunch of people, a group of people, then uh, they're all professionals and uh, working on creative field, uh, writing, singing, paintings. And we tried to find some, uh, you know, some contribution to the society, what they have already contributed, why they are renowned here, why they are like so much uh, famous here. So uh, we try to find out the reason why you should pick them, why you should select them. So, you know, the, because of the time constraints, so you can't uh, uh, do a, a, a long, uh, right, a long version. So we, we decided to make it a, a shorter. So um, we went everywhere uh, in the market, in the galleries and uh, what is whatever available to us. Then we decided to make the film that uh, we had a voiceover plan. So what we should tell, then what they will tell for the audience. So uh, we, have a, uh, we had a plan, it's a proper script. Then we showed to everyone, okay, uh, we are going to make this. So what is the, uh, you know, the problems uh, for the uh, corona, you know, the pandemic situation when they're available because everyone's profession was like uh, from home to office, uh, like 
you know the situation but everyone helped us and um, made the time for us and we shoot and uh, finally the yeah, I mean, what what uh, we would say like uh, you are you are i don't know if people have recognized it or not we have tried not to put any mask in the film so that was our main challenge i that would was say the challenge, yeah. because everywhere whenever you go you will see the mask so we wanted that okay that should be something which is universal not representing any particular time so right, yeah. if like you see mask then okay this this work or this documentary was done in 2020 pandemic time yeah even so, even in the bus yeah. even in the bus okay. there is a you know the instruction uh, uh, in every bus you can get like a poster wear, mask, wear, wear mask, mask blah 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 so we have to like do lots of post work we have to remove those yeah and, <laughs> from and, all the buses yeah yeah and back and forth like uh, retake <laughs> retake after retake shots like we are waiting for the driver whose mask was black so something like that <laughs> because most of the drivers are wearing like blue mask and when it's blue mask it's very we can, yeah we can remove this so when it's black mask then we can like uh, remove the mask after shoot with the editing so that was like our lots of work Little after right. work yeah. after the shoot and we have to take the shoot for like several times like our character is coming and behind someone is coming wearing mask so cancel it go again come again so like we have to do uh so back and forth that was the main challenge you know, in the post production uh it is a uh, little possible to uh like cover something but in the mask people like in the white uh, area of danforth everyone is uh wearing mask so I can take the shots. So I can control the people. So we are just waiting for that. So yeah. and another thing was like for this reason, um, uh, we couldn't like that. I would say it's a limitation that we couldn't cover much more outside, outside that, area, that outside that program, yeah. Bengali outside. There is no program. Yeah, like we have we have the Pahela Buishak, we have the um, uh, here different Bengali fair. Boimela book fair so lots of things but we didn't miss those so if it's like normal time we could make it more vibrant right it was not happening that yeah. time we hope yeah in future we will work on those more <laughs> oh thank you so much uh Anupam Shumita for all of that insight and all that clever uh filmmaking and editing Thanks. which I didn't even think about the <laughs> the removing the masks um and i think we now will uh have some closing remarks uh thank you everybody for joining us today thank you to the speakers anupam shumita and julie uh what you had to say was uh so interesting and um insightful and i think there'll be a lot to reflect on uh issues of home and how to make community and the different ways that communities are made um over time and over distances thank you also Nitin, for conceiving of this program uh, you put a lot into it thank you for to fsa for organizing it and for rom programs for hosting it um it was very important for us to mark bangladeshi's 50th uh, anniversary of their independence it's an important moment for many communities around the world and so just uh, thank you so much for for making this possible